Cincinnati 911. This is the address of the emergency. Help! Help! Cincinnati 911. The Seven Hills Web Parking Lot. Where are you? Hello? Where are you? It's probably don't have much time left to tell my mom that I love her if I die. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm trapped inside my gold Honda Odyssey van in the Southwood parking lot a seven hair hill step. Send officers immediately. I'm almost dead. This is the location where 16-year-old Kyle Plush tragically died in his minivan. You can see right here this little area that was turned into a small garden, if you will. This was the parking spot where Kyle was parked, where he was desperately calling 911 for help. And as you can see on your screen right now, the aerial view, you can see where that red star is, where the car was parked, is that little grass area right there. And this would be the little driveway to come in and out of the parking lot. Now, on that date when 
Kyle was coming here for a tennis match that he was having, he reached into the back of his minivan to grab his tennis equipment and somehow or another, either his foot hit something or I don't know, but the seat reclined back on him and he basically was trapped between the top part of the seat and I believe the back part of the vehicle itself, thus pinning him by his chest. As you can see, he had the wherewithal to call 911. The first time he called, the police came here within about 12 minutes of the first call. Now, he was still alive when the police came out. But for some unknown reason, they didn't get out of the car to check the area. Now, the second time he called, and now by this time, he is dying. He's telling them on the phone that he is dying. Now, he was able to call 911 by using Siri because he was unable to hear the 911 call. So this was not a this was not a speaker call. He was just basically telling Siri to call 911 and begging for help. The second time when the police came he did describe his vehicle. He had a gold-colored Honda Odyssey minivan. However, I, I don't know why, but the dispatcher on the second call, I believe that was Stephanie Maggie, she didn't relay the information that Kyle gave her to the responding officers. And they came out here yet again, and nothing happened. A complete and utter failure on the part of Cincinnati's EMS system. And it would be about six hours or so later before Kyle's dad, getting worried about his son because he hadn't come home yet, came here and found his son already dead in the minivan. One of the uh, absolute... Uh, most tragic and unusual ways I've ever heard somebody dying and what makes this more than anything of a tragic death was that if the officers would have gotten the information correctly they would have came seen a gold colored minivan and would have saved his life but because of the failures of both those 911 dispatchers, he was, in a sense, asphyxiated. He was crushed to death. After Kyle's death, his parents brought suit against the city of Cincinnati, including city manager Harry Black, cops, Edsel Osborne and Brian Brazil, the ones that showed up to the scene, and both 911 operators Amber Smith and Stephanie Maggie. Now, I do not know if either of the police officers or the 911 operators lost their jobs. I'm fairly certain they had to go back and probably do some training. And uh, his parents have settled with the city for the amount of six million dollars and they are also spearheading an effort to update the 911 system because i mean the 911 system was created uh back in the days when you know we used to use rotary phones and not to repeat myself but again what makes this case very tragic is that this could have easily be been prevented uh just by simply relaying the information that Kyle had sent to the 911 operator indicating that he was trapped in a gold colored minivan. And because of that failure, uh, this kid uh, lost his life in a very, very tragic fashion. And this is the final resting place of Kyle Jacob Plush, loving son and brother.
Rest in peace to this young man and hopefully uh, his parents' uh, mission now to uh, get this uh, story out and, you know, 911 operators. We often know that, uh, you know, most of the calls they get, some I'm sure they get a lot of crank calls, they get a lot of calls that are really not emergencies, but you still got to stay uh, vigilant because every once in a while you're, you're really going to get an important call and that that call that you receive you know you're responsible for whether that person lives or dies Stewart was riding with a group of friends. There's about 10 of them. They were all on their motorcycles. And uh, apparently he might have took a turn too quickly and uh, he hit a concrete wall and he crashed over his bike and fell into a creek bed about 20 feet below. And uh, sadly he died on the way to the hospital. As I was walking up and down the graves right here, I was looking for Kyle's grave and I was refilling the bird feeders in the cemetery. And as I was walking past here, I noticed this grave, I meant to come back to see who this was. And if you can't see it, this is Lindsay Elizabeth Bass. And uh, this young lady had went missing from uh, the Hamilton County area and it said online that she had suffered from some kind of mental illness that might have been exacerbated by a uh, car accident that she was in. And she had went missing and they found her remains in a wooded area and uh, they were unable to identify her, but the identification just by the clothing that she was last wearing, her family knew that it was her. They don't know uh, what happened. Uh, they don't know how uh, she died. Okay, I'm out of here. I have another story to do. It's about 50 miles to the east, so I got to start hitting the road. I will see you on the next video, why at least I hope to anyways. Alive, but not live. Still alive by the grace of God. Lamont at large. Catch up with you later. Peace out.